course you're uncertain, Cal, naturally. So was I, till I met him. But now imagine, if you can, a life without uncertainty, freedom from doubt, the ability to choose, single-mindedness. One life from each of us, Cal, is all he has. And he rewards our devotion a thousandfold. Personal desires, oh, yes, of course, anything. That's a part of it. It's only the beginning. There was a time, Cal, when man was at one with the gods. Before the fall. Now we're at one again. Cal. Cal. We want you to join us. What happened, they have a, they start thinking about things, and the conscious were on them. And, and, they, and they, they, they're getting these phone calls saying, you didn't throw up the goat today. And notice you didn't do those subliminal messages like we told you to in your record. So what's up with you? I'm just having a nervous breakdown. Get your ass together and get your act together. See, Fantasia tried that, and they got her back on track. I'm telling you, they had them second thoughts. It's too late. You get me? Fantasia got in too deep. Now, when she had first won American Idol, she should have just took the contract and left it alone. But, see, they want more. And how they get you, they dangle stuff in front of you. Well, you know, you can get, you know, the way you're going, you get a shoe line, you get a jog line, you get these clothing, your shirt. How would you like all that? Just keep doing what you're doing. They're putting it in your head, so later on they're going to pick your ass and say, you gave any thought to want to go higher? I would love to be in a $20 million club. Okay. Then they have one of them women come. See, they, a man ain't going to talk. Have a, a woman that's of the sisterhood be like, well, this is what we need you to do. I ain't fucking him off. Well, don't tell me what you ain't going to do, ho. You're going to suck him off, and you're going to let all the other guys go up in you. And if you don't do it, you will not have the money you have now. We're going to freeze your account. And if you tell the secrets, we'll kill your family. And she'd be like, what you talking about? They got pictures of your family, man. Once you become a part of these people, they have private investigators to go around taking pictures of your family. Did you know that? When you join into Satan's kingdom and you join the high, revel high levels of the brotherhood, it's expected of you to be as vile as possible. If you can't be vile, you're not going to get anything. You stop going to the meetings and you stop going to rituals, you start slowly losing everything that you had built up. You have to give to get. In Satan's kingdom. They didn't have to do rituals. These people, these freaks are always needing to do rituals together. Because if you want to, the, the, the movie roles coming in, then you've got to keep doing the rituals. If you want more fame as a singer, you want more time on the award shows, then you've got to be doing your time in the rituals. If you don't do your time in the rituals, then you suffer. Satan Satan makes you pay. If you want to be a celebrity in Hollywood, then your attendance at these parties is, is going to be mandatory. Eating feces, drinking urine, having illicit sex with these old men. You give up everything. See, that's dealing with the realization that they sold, they sold. They can't, see, every day they have to be high. They have to, like, be on a planet of nowhere because when you really think about what you've done for, for a few dollars, and they sad as hell. Everybody asked that question in the hood. Well, damn, man, they got them houses. They got all them freaks. How could they be sad? Because the Lord make you shame-faced after so long. The Lord put the shame on you and show you to your face you sold out for a season. If, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to do, to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract. with. Because if you spend all your time wanting fame and fortune and money and power and position, eventually you're going to run into this wall, this brick wall of the brotherhood, where you either join or give up all your dreams of being rich and famous. Because they control everything. They control the media. You won't get five minutes of media time as a celebrity if you're not one of them. And so these celebrities will go to these Hollywood underground parties, have sex with a million 
old men, pedophiles that are there, the agents and the handlers that, that control Hollywood, control the stars, eating feces, drinking urine, having illicit sex with these old men. You give up everything and become an abomination just for fame and fortune. This is Glenn Moore of Jubilee Countdown Ministries and now it's beginning to look very serious and it's becoming painfully obvious that we are indeed being programmed, being manipulated. In part one I showed you the evidence that the idea of mind control uh, was being introduced into a lot of Hollywood productions. And in part two, I showed the evidence that, yes, even the news media is attempting to program us. It appears quite successfully, I might add, based on the results on the political sphere. But now, now we're looking at Hollywood a little bit closer and it would appear that there's a lot of Satanism in Hollywood and in order to manipulate their star they have to get them to become as vile as they possibly can they want them to become vile and evil so that they can program us with that same mindset. Now I suppose someone is going to say, well, wait a minute. We know that Hollywood is a lot of times evil, but surely we can use family-oriented programming like Walt Disney to provide us good old-fashioned wholesome entertainment that's good for the whole family. What's wrong with that? At first it sounds like a great idea until you get into the nuts and the bolts of it and you look closely at Walt Disney. And I'm afraid that, uh, well, their star is quite tarnished, to say the least. I'll tell you what's the worst part about television is the is the programming, yeah. the philosophy. Okay, I mean the the manipulating of your mind, the philosophy, the the the, the mentality, the the system of thinking, the ideology. That's what's wrong with television. That's what's wrong with movies. That's where they're really getting in your head. Take for example Walt Disney. Right? And many people that will preach against the TV, they'll preach against the movies, they'll preach against Hollywood because it's obvious that that stuff is bad. But then they'll say, well, well, we watch Disney movies. And I've been to the home of preachers and Christians who would never watch TV or the movies, but yet they have the whole library of the Walt Disney movies. You know those white plastic cases? And they have them all lined up. And I mean, they have tons of them lined up, of course. I don't know how many there are, but there's hundreds of them. They have them lined up and, and lined up, and they have their kids watching those movies all day long. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to prove to you right now that those movies are wicked. Say, what? Disney movies? Come on. You're crazy. They're rated G. Well, let's see. First of all, did you know this? Did you know that Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages? Subliminal messages. Now, we're ta what are we talking about tonight? Sorcery. What are we talking about tonight? Uh, getting inside your mind and messing with you. Uh, controlling your thought process by, by uh, supernatural means or demonic means. Or Hey, I'm going to tell you something. Disney movies are filled with subliminal messages. And you say, oh, that's a hoax. I've seen it with my own eyes. When I was a teenager, I had a friend of mine 
sit me down at his house and show me the subliminal messages in the Disney movies. They're filled with subliminal messages. Let me give you some examples. The Lion King, filled with subliminal messages. Okay, all throughout the movie, there are pornographic pictures hidden in the movie. Like you'll be watching the movie and just for a few seconds, something filthy will come up. Like off to the side, there'll be some kind of a, you know, reproductive anatomy will, will pop up, you know, over here. And then and then over here, there's this one point where the lion, you know, he, he kind of goes like, like this. And a cloud of dust comes up and just spells the word sex. And the word sex is, is put in the Lion King movie subliminally, literally hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. The, 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 the shapes on the screen will spell the word. And I've seen it. I mean, I had my friend sit me down at his house and pausing the movie, showing me the word S-E-X popping up on the screen at different times because he knew where they were. And he would show me these things. Another one. Uh, and they all are filled with it. You know, Aladdin is another one. In the movie Aladdin, uh, there's, a, there's a part in the movie where the guy, the, what's his name, Aladdin? There's a point in the movie where he tells Jasmine to take all her clothes off. But you don't even know it unless you know it's there. You listen to it and he mumbles it kind of under his breath. Leave me alone. What the hell do you do? Yeah, how's our little bow doing? Look at us. And I mean, once you know it's there, you hear it just as clear as day. But you didn't know that it was there, you wouldn't hear it. And that the Little Mermaid has a, a filthy picture drawn in the cover on the front of the Little Mermaid. And nobody would realize it until somebody shows you and says, look at this. And you look at it, whoa! And all throughout the movie, there are scenes, I'm not even going to describe some of the scenes in The Little Mermaid, where subliminal messages are coming on the screen. Uh, the, the other movie, uh, Beauty and the Beast, there, you know, a nude woman pops up a few times in the background of Beauty and the Beast, filled with subliminal messages. Your kids are watching it, and their mind is maybe not even seeing it, but it's going into their subconscious. Words flashing on the screen over and over, S-E-X, S-E-X, S -E, you know, nudity, uh, uh, filth, there's all the smut is just coming on the screen, come on, oh, those movies are harmless, they're filled with subliminal messages, who knows what your kids are being programmed, oh, but you know what, I'm sure that it's only just the Disney movies, I'll guarantee you it's the rest of Hollywood probably doing the same thing, and these Disney movies, at first when I was a teenager and somebody showed me this, I thought it was just a couple movies, a couple scenes, but you know, as time has gone on, I've realized that virtually every Disney movie is packed with hundreds of subliminal messages to program the, the minds of your children. Okay, but then forget the subliminal message. Just the message of the Disney movies is perverted. Even if you just forget the subliminal message. I mean, for, what, what movies did we bring up? The Little Mermaid. You know, a half animal, half human being. And that's perverted in and of itself. All throughout the Bible, every false god is a half animal, half human being. They're constantly merging of animals and human beings. It's paganism. It's, it's wicked. And yet every Disney movie is pretty much based on the merging of a human being with an animal. It's described in the Bible. And, and uh, the, the movie The Little Mermaid, you know, she, she's topless the whole time, right? She's just wearing like a bikini top. How is that? Is that how you want your daughter to dress? Is that, oh, but there's no cussing, there's no nudity. Do you want your daughter going around in a bikini top? Is that modest apparel? Is that what Jesus Christ would have you to wear, ladies? No. The movie's filled with Satanism, witchcraft. There's some, what is it, Ursula, some witch that's casting spells and, and using sorcery and demonism. Oh, pretty innocent, right? All of them are filled with it in, in the movie Beauty and the Beast. Uh, the whole first half of the movie is these these prostitutes in the town that are dressed just half naked, dancing around, you know, admiring this guy, the big, strong, handsome guy. But all these girls are dressed indecently. They're 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 obscene in their gestures, subliminal messages, and then the whole movie is basically just exalting a certain physical standard of appearance. Beauty and the Beast is a movie about a woman who falls in love with an animal. And in the movie, they keep acting like, well, he's just ugly. He's not ugly, he's an animal. 
but there's a difference between being ugly and being a beast, being an animal. And if you've seen the if you've seen the cartoon, it's an animal. It's like a dog. It's like a big dog man. I mean, it's clearly an animal, and yet she falls in love with him while he's an animal. You know, only when she kisses an animal does he become a human being. Oh wow. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? 